So why bother with fundamental analysis at all? I mean, aren't, aren't the issues that I just talked about uh, somewhat invalidate this analysis as something that is entrenched in the past and therefore has no value into the future? Well, that's not actually the case. In fact, one of the places that fundamental analysis really comes out and shines is in reducing uh, risk. And I would classify in this case risk equaling volatility. Let me, let, let me talk through this. So for example, let's talk about ROE again. Well, well, what was that, that equation that we were looking at? Well, ROE was net income. So your profitability is one way to look at that over your owner's equity or your shareholder value. So, or your shareholder equity. So the, the, this answers a number of questions. One of which, for example, just to make my point, is we know that they are not only making sales, but they are making sales uh, somewhat su successfully. In other words, they are making profitable sales through just the, the uh, uh, net income number. If this is a good number, we know that they're using their assets, they're probably reinvesting into their uh, uh, business, trying to make things better. And we're answering a number of questions that uh, if we don't have the answer for those questions, can cause us problems. Because here's the, here's the thing, are there companies out there who have an incalculable return on equity? Yes, there are. And why would that be? What would cause that? Is it because they have no owner's equity? No. It is most likely because they have no net income. Now, is this a bad thing? Well, not necessarily if you're okay with taking that risk, but that's the point. If you have no income, what, is, what are shareholders basing their estimates of value on? It's exclusively not based on past performance, but based on expectations for future performance. Well, what happens when traders are caught up in expectations? Expectations equals risk, which equals volatility. So if, if I have traders who are only basing a stock's value on what they think it will do in the future, uh, through no evidence of uh, the best performance in the recent past or perhaps ever if the company has never been able to produce net income, uh, then what I'm really dealing with here is something that is going to produce volatility. So surprises, those big surprise events that can really shock your portfolio are increased with these kinds of stocks that have nothing like this. Now, but what about the question of, well, context and uh, these other extremes and well to a great extent they kind of exist even when you have uh, a return on equity number so for example if you have a return on equity that's really really high or very very low what you're really investing in are those statistical outliers within an industry group so you want to avoid those kinds of things here's what I tend to look for I, I set a benchmark of an ROE that's equal to uh, about 10 to anywhere from 10 to 40 percent greater than its industry itself. Now how you find those kinds of stocks and how you find this information is actually very straightforward. It's free uh, and widely available and we're going to show you how to do that in the next video. But by doing this, I'm basically taking my stocks out of that fat middle. It's looking at stocks that have some fundamental performance, but we're lopping off the extremes. We're lopping off the extreme highs so we don't get caught in one of those 52-week high problems. We're lopping off the lows so we don't get, uh, get caught in a lot of uh, very speculative stocks. And just by the nature of asking for an ROE score, we're lopping off a lot of stocks that have not been able to prove that they have any performance in the uh, any ability to perform in the past. So when you put these kinds of things together, you can get a very wide selection of stocks that have uh, proven some performance in the past and therefore in the, within a diversified portfolio have a very high probability of continuing to perform above what we might just get from the market itself, which is ultimately what we're really after as investors. So in the next section, we're gonna be looking at, all right, how can we find these kinds of stocks? How can we compare them against their industry group? And how can we make this as efficient as possible to add them to a diversified portfolio?